The topic of this podcast is start making it a to be list instead of a to do list. Oh. And, the, <laughs> and the to be list is who you're going to be versus the things oh. that you, the, versus the things that you need to do. And what I realized was, That's cool. yeah, I, yeah I, I heard somebody say this and it just struck me. I was like, I got to write that down. What I realized was is before I started doing the practice every single day, all I was doing was creating to-do lists. That's all I was doing. And it had to do with something else out there, something that I had to do, something that I want to do, but all of it was mostly in the service of me. Uh, and then when it was for other people, it was just, it, it was less about working on me though. My and, and there was a lot of suffering. There was a lot of, I have to go do this. Every once in a while, there was some, I get to do this. But for the most part, it was just not, prioritizing what really needed to be happening for me to have a peaceful life in which I'm sprinkling kindness everywhere I go, using every situation that hits my stuff as an opportunity for me to work on myself and to cultivate that inner peace that I absolutely just cherish. And so what I started to do, Rick, is I make a to be list. When something hits my stuff at work with the manager that I, my stuff, my, my uh, little Keith is, is, chirping about she doesn't get me she doesn't understand the way i work i'm a free bird don't clip my wings what are you doing this micromanaging this, all that nonsense that's going on like she's not the problem your to-do list is not to find another manager or to find another job your list is to be to become the kind of person that can handle a manager that may you know uh, lead or supervise in a different way than what my mind says is ideal for me. That's my work. My work is, is when traffic is not is a problem and I forget that I'm part of traffic because I'm out there with it. <laughs> so that means I'm a problem too. When I forget that, my to be list is to work on cultivating patience. That's what my practice is in that moment. And so I've really focused on Rick I realized that my focus with the practice has been on a to be list, not a to do list. What are your thoughts? Well, I never heard of that before. I think that's an excellent, excellent idea. The idea of becoming who you want to be in the world. If you see that you 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 want to be more compassionate, you want to be more patient, you want to be more thoughtful, you want to be less talkative, you want to be less frivolous, you want to be less gossipy. You can be all of those things and just focus on being that as the challenges roll in and, and being what your word is to yourself about who you want to be. One of the things that I've been de dealing with lately um, is uh, re remembering a lot of stuff in my past as a childhood, in my childhood. And I, I love my father, my mother too, but my dad was really a big deal for me. He was a loving, kind, upstanding, moral, honest beautiful man who had a great sense of humor and was just a, as gentle as they come. And the, the more I think about him, the more I, I'm trying to be more like him. And so I find myself sort of um, hero worshiping my own father in my old age and thinking, how would, how would my dad handle this thing? How, yeah. what, would, what would this look like for him? And the reason that you do that is because of the very thing you're talking about. If you're trying to develop a way of being that resonates with you. You can be anything you want. Why not focus on a role model that would help you, at least in the beginning until you get your own automatic reaction to it down? Um, why not focus on a role model that has some of those qualities that you can look at and emulate? I'm a great believer in faking it till you make it. You know, I don't I don't know what my dad went through. I mean, I'll, no, no, a little bit, but but my dad, everybody's a creature of everything that's ever happened to him. So or to them. So for him, he went through a lot of stuff and was able to still have these qualities that I so admired and so want for myself. And so it's easy for me to want to 
you know, figure out what the heck he was going through and how he did it. And I think for anybody who has a role model that is emulating a, a characteristic a personality trait or a way of dealing with life that they admire, that's probably a good starting point. But the practice that you've developed, I think, is essential and, and it will lead to that kind of thing, being who you want to be, being the person that you want to be in the world instead of focusing on all these little bullet points that you have to tick off every day. Absolutely. Rick, I, I totally agree. I think if you make a list uh, about a to be list, it will keep you out of a lot of trouble and a lot of suffering. So for example, if you say, I want to be a person who, uh, who allows people to express themselves, however they express themselves without me getting worked up or judging, then every time something happens that hits your stuff, that'd be an opportunity for you to practice. You, the, Cause you won't need them to be a certain way. Let's say that your daughter or son holds a different view than you do when it comes to social issues or, uh, or gender or political issues that are going around in the world and they hold a completely different view. If you're, if, if you unconsciously have a to-do list about what they should think and they shouldn't be thinking this way and I don't get it and all that, well, that's going to cause you a lot of suffering and it'll probably hurt your relationship. But if you have a to be list that is unconditional about who you want to be, that's a game changer. Yeah. You allow them to express themselves however they express themselves. Now, you may say, hey, listen, I have something to share with you. Have you considered this perspective? And if they say, yeah, I consider it and I reject it, then you accept that too. Because you are going to be unconditional in your love and allowing people to express themselves how they express themselves without you withdrawing or closing your heart to them. And I think the same thing when parents come home from a long day at work and it's like, hey, you know what? I really want to be a better parent than be a better parent. Then you don't yell and scream. You still guide the child the way that you should guide, but you don't allow yourself to be taken, you know, down that role of unconsciousness in which you say or do things that later you regret. And then the ego will make it hard for you to even come back and apologize to that to that loved one. And so you just start to work on yourself all the time. I see people want to know, hey, listen, how did you build that company? Or how did you those things? I'm like. Tell me about who you had to work on being to first. Mm -hmm. I want to know that. Yeah. I want to know what informs you in the, I mean, people can build companies and I think it has that place in terms of being respected and beat it and being admired. But you know what I, what I, what I would be more interested in is who were you being while you were building that company? How did you treat your employees and your staff? Did they have an equal voice? Were you coachable? Did you apologize if you did certain things that were not consistent with treating people with love and kindness and making them feel valued and creating a sense of belonging with you? I want to know that. You know, you raised these amazing, you know, kids. Like, what the, what kind of parent were you? The kids would be like, well, they yelled at me every time. They were a helicopter parent. And like, man, if I, I was scared to fail in front of them, I, I suffered in silence for so long because I couldn't go to them and talk to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. So I understand what you were doing as a parent, but who were you being? And the same thing when it comes to relationships, people say to me like, Hey, Keith, you know, like you really show up in your relationships so amazingly. Well, if you go back before the practice <laughs> as those folks I showed up because I had a to-do list as opposed a, to a to-be list. And you can still have a to-be list that is, I want to, you know, I want to be a stand for people. Well, being a stand for people, who, who are you in taking that on? Are people left feeling encouraged? Are they left feeling supported? Because you can also do the same thing by making people fear you. But there's an impact to that. Not one that's loving and kind and, you know, treating people with respect. And so I had to learn because I was doing the latter more than I was doing the former. And so I had to learn how to work on myself. And so these days, Rick, I'm doing a lot more. Uh, I have a lot of things on my to-do list and that the practice helps me accomplish. And I prioritize that over a to-do list any day of the week. I'm all about that to-be list. You want to close this out? No, I, I can't. Uh, I can't close this out, Keith. You said everything beautifully. I, I love the idea of having a to-be as opposed to a to-do. The whole idea of 
being a certain way in the world that you've chosen and then manifested that and shown the world that that's who you're going to be. That is really a powerful way of living. Very powerful. And, you know, you're an excellent example of that. And all of us who like being with you are beneficiaries. So a great topic. And I really appreciate your sharing in all of this. To be, that's, you know, kind of to be re, right? <laughs> that's kind of. That's it, Rick. Yeah. yeah. I just want to be loving, kind, considerate, and open hearted. Serve the moment in front of me, regardless of what is going on out in the world or what people are doing. Thanks, Rick. Amen. I love you. Amen, brother. God, I wish there was a million of you on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Rick. I love you, Keith. Adios. Adios.